Hi guys, Anti Lunchbox here. And judging from the previous videos, hopefully you watch them. Uh, I'm gonna quickly show what Sound Manager Pro is about. So as you guys know, Sound Manager Pro is all about handling everything in your uh, game for you, Every, everything audio related. So if I enter a scene, load music scene one, it's gonna start playing my scene one playlist. If I go to season two, it's gonna crossfade directly to a new playlist, and so on. Doesn't matter how many scenes I change, you will always end up with the right song, the right playlist. So I'm not gonna repeat what I've said in other videos. I'm just gonna go over what's new in Sound Manager Pro 3. So let's go through the stuff that got added. So the first thing I added was audio source extensions. So basically you can take any audio source in your game and play Sound Manager Pro functions from it. Um, the second thing I added was audio source pro. So audio source pro, uh, it's pretty big. So I added a new demo scene. You see here it says Sound Manager Pro demo scene part two. Uh, you can see these are all the different parts of this demo scene. So let's play it. So it says click next through the examples of different ways to use Audio Source Pro. Click next, you can hear a sound one off. So in this first, in part one, uh, it demonstrates loading a clip regularly. So an Audio Source Pro looks exactly like a regular audio source, except here you can set your clip type. So there's audio clip, clip from sound manager, clip from group. So this one just loads it a regular way. You end up putting an audio clip in here. And then let's go to the next part. It does the same thing, but it's loaded differently. So if you go to part two, you could click, um, the clip type is clip from sound manager. And instead of actual audio clip, it's just the name of the clip. And that clip is already on your sound manager. You can see it here. Let's go to the next one. It's the same, but this one is loading a clip from the group blow up. So here, if you go down to your sound effects, you can see that explosion one is added to the blow up group. Um, I'll explain a little later how I change things here in the stored sound effects. You can either sort by time added or sort by group, but you know I'll go through that later. So. In the next part is part four. So I'm going to stop this now so I can talk. So here in part four, event triggers, what they essentially do is, it's a third little drop down here called event trigger settings. You can set um, a compatible event. On this, in this case, it's on enable. You can see a bunch of events here. On enable you play it as a loop. And on disable, you stop it. So if I go back to part four, it should stop when it gets disabled, which it did. So now in part five, we click part five here, we have what Audio Source Pro is able to do, it's able to automatically pick up events from scripts on the same game object. So right here I have a script with events. It just has two events in it. And one is called Explode. And you see it comes up on the dropdown. And one is called Detonate. It also comes up in the dropdown. And so on Explode, it'll play loop. On Detonate, it'll stop. So you see the buttons here, explode and detonate. All I do is call the events. So let's try it out. And there you go. It's easily set up without a word of code. So now in part six, um, this is literally just a example. Sorry, I have my phone. This is an example of how you can 
filter all these uh, certain events by tags, layers, or names. So here you can either you can do any combination. So in this case, you have on collision enter play this clip only if the tag is untagged and the layer is the default layer. So you can change these things. You can even include a name and put in your own name or any name you want. You can put a list of names. So there's a lot of options here of doing things without a line of code. So that was a big addition in Audio Source Pro. So now I'm done with this demo. Uh, let's move back to the first part. That's not safe. Uh, so another big addition to Sound Manager Pro and, and SMP3 was a whole new editor system. Everything has been improved for editor performance, but not only that, the in-game performance has improved drastically. Uh, in order to help that happen, um, we've I basically added O1 performance for sound effects. I've also included a pre-pool option for sound effects as well as individually pooled sound effects. So that really helps performance and it shouldn't cause any type of hiccup in your game. Uh, along with that, I've also included many fixes to prefab issues that have been seen in the past. So now you can set up your prefab, go down here, you can set it up all here and you can drag this prefab into any scene that you want and it will be all be the same, no issues. You can treat this prefab any, just like any other prefab. And so you can test, this basically allows for testing audio if you want to start in, uh, a scene in the middle of your game and you only you don't want to go through from the beginning. Uh, another thing I've added is, I said this earlier, but a pre-pool option for sound effects. So let's say we go back to here, the sound manager. Uh, you can see we can open up the details on each of these sound effects. And you can see here that Explosion 1 has been added to my group. It has a pre-pool amount of 2. So when I play this, you will see two disabled Explosion sound effects objects. Because they're pre-pooled, they will already be there. and It doesn't cause any like load hiccup to play these. Uh, along with that, I've added a way to auto add to group and auto pre pool an amount. So whenever you drag and drop sounds into your audio manager, it will assume these groups and pre pool amounts that you have set. So another thing we've added to the sound manager has been a lot more developer settings. Um, the thing about the pre-pool performance increase is that we've added a lifetime to objects that surpass that, uh, that pre-pool amount. So say I have two explosion sound effects as my pre-pool amount. If I play it enough times so that it comes up six times, these objects will have a 10 second lifetime of not playing before they disappear, which is great. So you can change that you can also set your ignore level load from directly in the sound manager. Some other features I've added to sound manager pro have been added to the demo scene. So let's go through that. So now there's a third page to the demo scene. I've added a bunch of uh, functions to crossfade sound effects now. So you're not only crossfading music, you can now crossfade sound effects. So this is going to crossfade in an explosion sound. Oh, actually, this is the eruption sound. And when you go to actually hear the real eruption sound, this is what it sounds like. So you can see that it got crossfaded in. And crossfade in is not the only function I added here. There was crossfade from two different audio sources. There is a cross in and cross out, just like you would have for the music. 
Um, another thing I've added here is ducking. Ducking is huge. Um, you'd want to use this for things like flashbangs or slow motion. And here I've added two examples. By the way, every every button in this demo is done with one line of code. So use ducking for flashbang effect. Let's, uh, let's play a song. So you can see there that the music in the background lowered. I set that to 10% volume while that sound is playing. Not only can you do volume, you can do pitch as well, which adds a great slow motion sound effect. So let's go to that too. Pentakill. So you can see there that not only did the volume change, but the pitch changed as well. And when it came back, it gradually came back to the normal pitch and volume sound. Uh, the last two things I've added, I've added um, a run on end function for sound effects. So it's not only apply, it doesn't only apply to music. And I've also added a delay easily to sound effects. So. This uh, button will basically debug in the console once the sound effects is done playing. So there you go. And then this function will play sound effects after one second. And depending on whether you have what version of Unity you have, this will always take in seconds. So I remember in before 4.1, play sound effects you had to take in. Uh, depending a number depending on the sampling rate so you'd have to multiply a second by 44,000 and it was it was weird so this just simplifies it down to one universal amount so apart from that that's everything that's new in Sound Manager Pro 3 I hope you guys enjoy it and have fun